foot rock layer was the crack doing some German volume training today so really getting into some high volume training now we're doing 10 sets of 10 reps we're keeping our time under tension at greater than 40 seconds so at minimum you should be under the bar lifting the weight for 40 seconds and our rest periods are kept nice and short between 60 and 90 seconds now if you can't maintain that rest period and if you can't get that time under tension at 40 seconds then you need to drop the weight in order to do so okay so I'm starting off nice and light so obviously today I'm doing leg day starting off nice and light getting I think I got 65 kilos on there and as you go through it the weights are going to drop okay but you should always be getting your 40 seconds under the bar and then rest periods no greater than a minute and a half so first one squat again using my heel plates make sure you check that video out if you haven't seen the video on squat tips and tricks and I'm going through full range again and this is really important when we're doing such high volume to get full range so that we get you know adequate stretch the muscles at the bottom of the motion so again going through full range concentrating on keeping my form good you're really going to feel a load of blood in the quads in this one I feel a little bit in my lower back as well but mainly feeling it in the quads and this type of hypertrophy training is why you'll hear lads say leave your ego at the door okay so it's really important that you concentrate more on the time under tension and rest time periods than the actual weight itself. It doesn't matter how much weight's on the bar. Okay, you're trying to almost beat up the muscles as much as you can. Your muscles haven't a clue how much you have on the bar. And you're getting all the stimulus through just constant tension that is in the muscles. Okay, so let's count out my reps here. So we're coming towards the end of a set. So we're going to wait until we get to the next set. I'm actually going to drop it down here. So as you see, as you go through this, the weight gradually drops down. Uh, in between my sets, again, between my 60 and 90 seconds, I do do either rehab work or else I do some kind of skills work. So that's really important to save time. So get into the habit of doing something in between your sets. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. So I'm going down at about a pace of three seconds. That's actually quite quick here in this one. But usually what you want to aim for is about three or four seconds on the decline on the way down. So your eccentric phase has to be nice and short. And your concentric phase can then be quicker. So your concentric phase can be a second or two. At the end of this, what I'm doing is I'm just blasting out a couple more reps to try and get a, a bit more work done, a bit more blood in. And my very last set just done there, so that was my 10th set. Now I just moved on to some bodyweight squats and these were the hardest of them all so just bodyweight squats by this stage you're going to be absolutely gassed so I'm just trying to get 10 bodyweight squats done really really feeling the burn in my quads and again that's just another trick to, to get a bit more volume in moving on now to straight leg deadlift so with our squats, we were mainly, mainly focusing on our quads. So your quads will be absolutely burning up after those squats. So what we want to do is we need an exercise now to focus on our hamstrings. So obviously our hamstrings at the back. So this is our straight leg deadlift. I'm just doing a bit of a technique set and a bit of a warm up there. And getting a bit of weight on it. Again, we're going to follow the same principles. We're going to be going for 10 sets of 10. We're going to increase our... Or we're going to increase our time under tension to 40 seconds minimum and we're going to rest for 60 to 90 seconds in between sets now you'll see me wearing a stopwatch so I time the amount of time I spend lifting the weight so I time my time under tension and I also time my rest periods to make sure I'm on point with this one I find that this is a shorter range of motion than the squat so the start point and end point of this movement is sh quite short in comparison to a squat which is actually you know you've quite a distance to travel up and down with the squat so the bar path is is quite long so what I ended up doing on this one in order to keep my time under tension at around 40 seconds or greater I did you know 12 to 15 reps on the on each exercise this time 
Now with this one, obviously we're focusing on our hamstrings. We want to be uh, in a good spinal position. So you want to lean forward and the movement is at your pelvis, not at your lower back. The movement has to be at your pelvis. You're keeping your spine in neutral and you're just basically reaching down and getting a stretch in your hamstrings. So at the bottom there, I get a stretch in my hamstrings. And when I get a good stretch in the hamstrings, I come back up. Okay. The weight should be going through your heels. The weight should not be over your toes. You got to imagine like when you're at the bottom, like you're trying to rip the ground back with your heels. Oh, you might feel this in your calves as well a little bit. That's good. Okay, so this is our main hamstring exercise. Again, in between all my sets, I'm either doing a bit of skills or doing a bit of rehab work. Moving on to now, side plank with hip abduction. This is more of a sport specific movement than anything else. So this is really good for agility. Uh, if you're purely looking to change the aesthetics of your body, then you, know, you don't need to do this one. So this one, three working sets, three sets of eight to 12 reps. I do 10 on the left, 10 on the right, and then repeat straight away. And then I have to take a little bit of a break because it's very tiring. And then back up again into side plank and get that hip abduction. Okay, making sure I'm keeping a really straight posture when I'm in my side plank position. And more bollocks by the end of that. Last one, or sorry, second last one, sliding board. So this is one for, again, a sport specific agility, side to side movement. What I'm using here is a sliding board. So this is a very particular piece of equipment that we have in our gym and it's kind of, you know, uh, athletes will use this kind of stuff, um, professional athletes will use this, ice hockey players will be on this kind of thing the whole time. And what we're doing is more or less sliding over and back and it really works our groins and our hip abductors again. I have kettlebells there in my hand and I'm using that to just increase the resistance, increase the difficulty. I did this for about 5 minutes, oh sorry, 5 to 10 minutes in total. So kind of on for you know a couple of minutes and then took a rest and then on again. So I varied it then in between um, holding the kettlebells, dropping the kettlebells and doing almost like a drop set then at the end. So as you can see, it's a lot easier. I'm moving a lot quicker when I don't have the kettlebells. And uh, yeah, this is a really good one again for, you know, particularly Gaelic football when you're moving side to side the whole time. Final one then, calf raises. So I'm not very particular on trying to build up my calves i've had posterior compartment syndrome in the past where i've had a lot of calf problems and it's you know posterior compartment syndrome is typically um you know seen in a lot of bodybuilders so i'm not overly concerned about developing my calves but i still want to get some kind of stimulation so i'm doing just three sets of calf raises like this now this is this is by far enough stimulation for me i actually think i did 15 reps in this one uh, on each one of these so just up and down I feel plenty of blood and no rest in between finally then I did a bit of core so this is more sport specific core I will make a video on aesthetic core so uh, that's how I like to split up core there's core that you can do for sports and then there's core that you can do just to look good so as you can see even getting set up and this is a bit of a challenge so eventually I do get there I actually saw, um, the first time I saw this done was uh, Drew Brees was the first guy I saw doing this and uh, that's where I got the idea from. Um, I also have a friend, Peter Ryan, who, who used to do a bit of this, which was, uh, Peter Ryan is a, a Paralympian cyclist, so um, yeah, picking up uh, tips and tricks from, from everybody. So we got a couple of these, we got a kind of almost like a, a pencil pencil dive movement. We're just coming, lifting our, our pelvis straight up into the air. This one then is the one from uh, that Peter Ryan showed me. Just up and down like that. And you're trying to control the sway of your legs that go side to side. And trust me, there's a whole pile of core on that. And then we got ones that we've done before, side to side, bringing the knees up to the side. And then you can work that in with you know, legs up one leg at a time. <laughs> You can work it in with two legs up at a time. You can work it up with a uh, pencil dive. So generally what I do is I kind of go for as hard as I can for about 30 seconds with a couple of different movements and then uh, rest and repeat. If you liked the video, please do subscribe. Partaglach in our broad. Agus Brish de